Hi, Jamie Linderman here. I'm with here with Colin Howlett with Vesema CTO. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks, Great. Jamie. Great. Well, um, you know, we're we're talking a lot about cable today, <laughs> and uh, but we've also been bringing up PON. And so, could you talk a little bit about XGS PON and 10 gig PON deployments and what you're seeing some global trends as well as what you're seeing specifically with some cable operators? Yeah, we're seeing a lot of a lot of activity, a significant uptick. It's being driven by telcos and the need for them to move from copper-based architecture to fiber-based. In addition, we're seeing the uh, closing of digital divide in many areas, especially in North America, where funding is driving rural deployments. This competition from the telco operators is driving cable operators to have similar performance, whether that's DOCSIS 4.0 and the drive that's happening there for multi-gig, or deploy their own 10-gig PON services. But of course, those cable operators are, are well suited to do this because they have fiber deep in their networks, and they're deploying a mix of both XGS PON and 10-gig EPON, depending on the operator. So 10 gig EPON being deployed by a lot of larger cable operators. Uh, why is that the case? And uh, what sort of effect is this having on the market? Yeah, those larger operators are deploying it. A couple of reasons. One, historical. There just wasn't the interoperability when the GPON days, when the cable operators first started. So they created DOCSIS provisioning of EPON. That brought DOCSIS back office, both OSS and BSS. It also brought the interoperability we're used to with DOCSIS cable modems. These larger operators have a significant installed base of DOCSIS, they want to take advantage of that. And then as we look at the global market, really the silicon has converged between XGS and 10 gig EPON. So an ONU for scale might just be the same silicon with a different firmware load. That allows these operators to take advantage of both. We'll see over time maybe a change in what's happening with 10 gig EPON, but we'll have to see what comes from that. So talking about you know beyond, what do we see beyond 10 gig? Well, certainly there's kind of a 25, 50, 100, 200 right, right. Hey, terabit. I was at OFC last week and they were talking about terabit per I, second. I, I heard that, yeah. <laughs> no, we're not going there with pun yet. Okay. But 25 gig, there's early solutions in the market. And I think that's there's not enough of a delta from a performance perspective on the downstream. It's two and a half times. We'd like to see five or 10 times jump. Um, and it's also not clear that the ONU cost will come down fast enough, whereas we're seeing 50 gig being pushed hard by the Chinese operators. It's going to be a little later to the market, but 10 gig has a lot of runway, so we expect that 50 gig will likely be the dominant in three or four years as it starts in the second half of the decade as it starts to roll out. Um, and of course, we're already doing work on 100 gig. So bringing up the uh, the topic of Coherent, where does Coherent Pond fit into all of this? Yeah, Coherent Pond. So Cable Labs has been working on a specification for a little while now on 100 gig Pond. And one of the real advantages of Coherent, and this is coming from the data transport industry, whether it's data center interconnect or the long distance transport, they're getting power down, they're getting the cost down on the Coherent side and driving the volumes up, especially data center interconnect. What that's letting us do is take advantage of a bigger link budget to do different things with PON. We have 100 gig is way more capacity than we need from a residential perspective. We can use it for aggregation. We could maybe increase the splits, maybe use the extra link budget to increase the distance. Um, so these are all interesting things. It's kind of a different approach than just saying, okay, we're going to do another speed step that's 20 kilometers and 64 way split. It's really rethinking, can we change the model to a high split ratio in urban environment to get power and cost down, or maybe a low split ratio but long distances in rural, we can do truly passive, maybe all the way to 80 kilometers. Really interesting things happen, and I think we'll see lots in the coming years. So lots of innovation and opportunity for operators. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a great future for Pond. Awesome. Thanks so much, Colin. Thank